A strange thing happened when the A320 that China bought had no radar signature, no commercial records to track it, and absolutely no trace. What really happened? According to one rumor, the plane was quietly moved to a secret hangar where engineers disassembled it piece by piece, reverse engineered it, and created something entirely new. The C919, a challenger to the dominance of Boeing and Airbus. But why did it disappear? And how did that secrecy lead to one of aviation's greatest mysteries? Let's find out. The global aviation industry is at a historic crossroads facing soaring passenger demand, aging fleets and limited production capacity from the world's two leading manufacturers, Airbus and Boeing. With a huge backlog of orders exceeding some 15,000 commercial aircraft airlines across the continent are in an unprecedented wait, often forcing them to delay fleet renewals for years. Airbus currently produces about 40 aircraft a month and aims to double that to 75 by the end of the decade, while Boeing still reeling from the aftershocks of the 7237. Max Crisis is struggling to stabilize production at about 38 a month amid supply chain disruptions, labor unrest, and regulatory scrutiny. While both giants are delivering more than one aircraft a month, it's still not enough to meet customer demand. As demand outstrips, supply airlines are scrambling to find modern fuel-efficient jets to replace aging fleets and cater to the growing middle-class traveler base across Asia, the Middle East, and Africa. The aviation industry's thirst for new aircraft has never been greater. Airlines are delaying routes, extending leases on older aircraft, and paying high prices for used aircraft just to keep up with passenger growth. Yet amid this shortage, one unanswered question remains, why is almost no one buying China's C919? Refer to China's commercial aviation industry or COMAC Beijing's bold state-backed competitor to the Western aerospace monopoly, the C919. is more than just a jet. It's a symbol of national ambition and industrial independence. Designed to compete with the Airbus A320neo and Boeing 737 MAX, the jet carries the weight of national pride and decades of industrial ambition. Backed by billions of dollars in state support, it represents China's determination to maintain its independence, shaking up the global aviation order. But the road to prestige is steep, as despite a worldwide aircraft shortage, International airlines have kept their distance from the C919. The hesitation is not just economic. It lies deeper, perhaps, at the core of trust technology and geopolitics. This is just the beginning. We're about to reveal the shocking secret. But don't forget to like and subscribe to continue the journey. China's C919 initially seemed like the perfect solution a narrow-body airliner that seats 155 to 174 passengers and flies at Mach 0.78. After decades of development and billions of dollars in government funding, it seemed ready to compete on the international stage. Their first passenger plane had finally arrived. Yet strangely, no one was buying it, or even showing much interest. Why the answer lies in the cracks in the very industry China wanted to disrupt. For decades, Boeing and Airbus had dominated the skies, but even they faced challenges. Production delays, tight supply chains, and ongoing quality issues, most notably Boeing's 737. Max Crisis created the biggest opportunity for a new competitor in 50 years. China recognized this gap and invested heavily as a result, the C919 has been certified entered commercial service in 2023 and has received more than 1,200 orders. By all accounts, this should have been a breakthrough for China's aerospace industry. But the reality was anything but easy. In the early 2000s, as revealed in a French documentary, Patrick Devout, former vice president of economic intelligence at Airbus, shared a startling secret. One of the first Airbus A320s sold to China never flew commercially. 
Instead, it was quietly taken to a government facility, disassembled and dissected piece by piece. Chinese engineers took it apart to copy every part of the plane, he said. But the efforts didn't stop at reverse engineering the physical components. The documentary alleges a massive Chinese cyber espionage operation targeting Western aerospace companies, stealing tens of thousands of hours of engine test data, integration, reports, certification documents, and supplier specifications. These were not just basic blueprints. They included detailed engineering solutions, failure analyses, material limitations, and system protocols. Detailed information that would normally take decades and billions of dollars to gather. This trove of knowledge formed the backbone of the modern commercial aircraft. The technical similarities between the C919 and the Airbus A320 are significant. The C919 19's fuselage is 38.9 meters long, slightly longer than the A320's 37.57 meters, and its wingspan is 35.8 meters compared to the A320's 34.1 meters. Both aircraft have a top speed of Mach 0.78 and a similar capacity reflecting their intended role in the same narrow-body market segment. However, alongside these similarities, allegations have emerged that China did more than just take inspiration. According to testimony from Alaju, a former French intelligence coordinator, the aircraft's development involved unprecedented industrial espionage. They allege that China stole knowledge on a large scale, not just from one aircraft, but from a range of proprietary aerospace technologies. Essentially, the aircraft uses borrowed technical intellectual property, rather than being a completely new design. However, this so-called inspired aircraft still faces some serious drawbacks. First, fuel efficiency is a major concern. The C919 consumes about 10% more fuel per seat than the A320neo. This is largely due to the heavier Leap 1C engines, which add between 780 and 945 kilograms to each engine for a total of nearly 1,560 and 1,890 kilograms. This reduces the aircraft's range to 5,555 kilometers, compared to the A320neos 6 to 300 Balrut kilometers, limiting its operational flexibility on many long-haul routes such as Beijing to London or Shanghai to Los Angeles. Second, the aircraft's heavy reliance on Western-made components creates strategic vulnerabilities. More than 90% of key components come from companies like GE Safran Honeywell and Collins. For example, the U.S. suspension of Leap 1C engine exports by 2025 has significantly increased production and deliveries significantly undercutting COMAX targets. This dependence undermines the idea of an autonomous Chinese airline and poses logistical and certification challenges for international airlines. Third, manufacturing capacity remains a significant barrier. While Airbus and Boeing can each produce 38 to 45 aircraft per month, COMAC has only delivered 15 by the end of 2024 and is targeting 30 by 2025, eventually reaching 200 a year by 2029. Producing reliable commercial aircraft at scale is a decades-long process that requires sophisticated tooling, strict quality control, a robust supply chain, and a highly trained workforce, areas Boeing and Airbus excel at. Fourth claims that the jet was built through large-scale industrial espionage remain unproven. Even industry sources describe the Super Jumbo as a conservative A320 class powerhouse that incorporates licensed Western technology rather than groundbreaking or stolen designs. Its main stumbling blocks are inefficiency dependence on foreign components and production constraints, which explain why despite government support, the jet has struggled to gain traction outside China. In short while, the C919 is technically comparable to the Airbus A320, its fuel efficiency range and supply chain independence are currently inferior. The future success of China's Darling depends on overcoming engine licensing delays for its domestic CJ1000A engine, scaling up production and building global trust through safety certifications and brand reputation. For now, 
The C919 remains a fledgling competitor finding its footing rather than becoming a disruptive force in the global aviation industry. The superplane's journey reveals a deeper truth about China's aviation ambitions, one that goes far beyond simply copying or adapting existing Western technologies. Aircraft design may start with blueprints and engineering, but building a successful aerospace industry requires mastering the entire ecosystem. The real challenge isn't reverse engineering a single plane, but building and maintaining the invisible network that allows it to exist, fly and be trusted around the world. First and foremost, the foundation of the global aerospace industry's success lies in controlling the supply chain. Every major aircraft manufacturer from Airbus to Boeing relies on a vast, deeply synchronized network of suppliers to deliver precisely engineered components on time every time. To compete at this level, the country must build a similar ecosystem at home capable of producing high-quality materials, avionics engines and flight systems with absolute consistency. Furthermore, China must balance this with integrating advanced components from international partners, ensuring reliability while navigating export restrictions and geopolitical tensions. Without this supply chain resilience, even the most advanced designs will be held up by logistical fragility. Second, no aircraft can fly globally without certification. China's C919 airworthiness approval is a major milestone, but international recognition by authorities like the FAA and ESA remains elusive. These certifications are more than just paperwork, they are the result of years of testing data transparency and trust between regulators and manufacturers. Achieving this requires technical rigor and open safety data exchange something the Chinese aviation industry is still working towards. Without this validation, Comac's aircraft market will be largely confined to its domestic borders. Third, and perhaps most important reputation, Airbus and Boeing did not achieve global dominance overnight. They built their reputations over decades through reliability customer support and transparent crisis management. Trust in the aviation industry is as important as technology. To win the trust of airlines and passengers, the Superjet must demonstrate not only its ability to fly safely, but also its ability to operate reliably over millions of hours and thousands of flights. Finally, China's program is not just a national project, but also a test of the country's industrial maturity. If China can master these closely linked pillars, supply chain independence, certification, credibility, and brand trust, it could reshape the global aviation industry. If not, the C919 may remain a powerful symbol of ambition, but not of rise. So what do you think can China really build an independent aerospace empire? Or will the C919 remain held back by its own limitations? Share your thoughts below. And now, goodbye and see you in the next videos.